All right, this is WrestleZone Weekly. I'm Joe Dombrowski. On the road still, we are here in North Carolina catching up with somebody who is uh, uh, synonymous with North Carolina professional wrestling uh, from the days of Omega all the way to his present role, mentoring uh, the next generation as part of the Helms dynasty. He is the Hurricane Gregory Shane Helms. How are you, sir? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? Well, I'm doing great. It's great to be in the presence of you, Mr. Helms. Uh, followed your career, obviously, way back to, to WCW days, onto your present day role uh, as an agent, a producer for, for TNA Impact Wrestling. Uh, how have you embraced this role? Have you encountered any challenges now uh, being more so the coach as opposed to the player? Uh, I actually, I love it way more than I, I thought I would. I knew I would enjoy it, but I just, I didn't think I would, you know, really like it as much as I do. You know, I get just as much enjoyment out of seeing uh, somebody new go out there, try something new and it working for them, to see uh, some of the things, some of the information that I acknowledge that I can share with them, to see them utilize it and see why it works and how it works and watch them learn. You know, I mean, it's like a teacher. And that's the only thing I can compare it to is the joy that a teacher must feel seeing a student excel. So uh, I, I really love it. You know, I'm, I'm very cognizant of the fact that, you know, my best years are behind me in terms of, of what I can do in the ring, you know, uh, and, I'm, and I'm very fine with that. You know, I've, I've aged gracefully. I, I'm aged like wine. I started out as a grape and life stomped the shit out of me. So um, <laughs> uh, I'm very happy there. I, I really enjoy what I'm doing. And uh, a couple of guys that you're mentoring, one just walked by us right now, Trevor Lee and uh, Andrew Everett, the Helms Dynasty. Now, I'm sure I you... I want to say those small-ass trunks that Trevor Lee wears, yes. I had nothing to do with that. You had nothing to do with that? Nothing to do with no. them Kendall Wyndham-esque trunks. <laughs> he has a very unique look, doesn't he? Very yes. out there fashion sense. Yes, There's no fashion sense. No, Zero. none whatsoever. Well. I think the caveman comparisons are very apropos. But you've known these guys since a very young age, and uh, you've watched them grow. Uh, uh, talk about the sense of pride and seeing them develop into oh, really world-renowned performers. You know, that's, um, that's too something that's uh, uh, kind of unexpected, you know, uh, something I never thought about as I was, you know, in, into my, you know, up the prime of my career. I never thought I would uh, kind of be seeing these guys, kids that I saw. I mean, I, I think I met Trevor when he was like four or five. You know, and, and Drew when he was six or seven. So did Trevor um, have the beard back then? Yeah, yeah, he was oh. born with that beard. So um, it wasn't a good-looking baby no. at all. Um, but but you know, as you as you watch people grow, it is something that just kind of organically happens. You know, I, I think that if you watch somebody from that early of an age, watch them progress, not only as performers but as human beings. You know, as long as they turn out to be good performers and good human beings, uh, I think there's a sense of pride that you can't help but feel. Right. So it was something that was unexpected. You know, and it's uh. You know, I got a great deal of, uh, of admiration for those little kids and a great deal of affection for them. Now, I love them! <laughs> you're a very opinionated guy. One of the things I respect about you. Um, and the good thing is I'm always right, though. That's the good thing. Well, that, always. that's how opinions work, right? Um, people are very vocal on the internet about TNA. Uh -huh. And uh, they have their uh, conceived notions, their perceptions on their thoughts on the company, their thoughts on morale, their thoughts on, on how the business is run or lack thereof or whatever they say. Um, and I'm not pretending to be anybody I'm not. My career with TNA consisted of one day, but it was a very positive day. I enjoyed the locker room morale. I enjoyed the, the, the hunger, the young talent uh, trying to work to build something. Um, why do you think TNA gets the, the bad rep that it does from the internet wrestling crowd? That's just people jumping on a bandwagon. You know, it's, it's the Nickelback effect. For one, you know, one day Nickelback was one of the most over bands in the world, and the next day everybody just hated them, and nobody can really say why. And everybody jumps on that music was terrible. Well, it was number one for a long fucking time, so it couldn't have been that bad. So just something like that, you know, uh, some fans just have a bandwagon mentality, a mob mentality. You know, it, it become cool to bash TNA for a little while, but uh, those people aren't watching. You know, the people that I talk to that try to bash, and I say, when's the last time you watched? And it was always, well, it was a couple years ago. Well, okay, I wasn't there a couple years ago. Right. I can't do shit about what happened before I was there. I really can't help what happened in the AWA either. I wasn't right. there either, you know. But if you look at TNA now, you know, forget about the ghost of TNA's past. Watch TNA now. It's a good product. It's a damn good product. Production-wise, nobody can compete with WWE, not just TNA. Although, strangely enough, we're the only ones that ever get compared to WWE. Right. And there's a reason for that, too. 
And I want to get back to TNA more in a second, but also I know that you just spent a couple weeks overseas yes. entertaining the troops. Uh, I, I know that's something that uh, that's near and dear to you, so please tell us a little bit about uh, that experience. It's hot as hell over there. I don't know if you know that, <laughs> but it's blazingly hot. Um, but it, that, that's a rewarding experience, something I jumped at, you know, and uh, I have to you know, really thank TNA for, you know, that was during TV time, you know, and I signed a contract that I would be there, you know, for these TV dates. But then this opportunity came up to go overseas, and I was like, you know, can I, can I take, you know, I've only been here a year, but can I ask for a week off? <laughs> you don't want to do that in any job. But uh, they, they, they were really respectful of, what, you know, of the, uh, the tour. And I went over there, man, and I, I had a blast. And it's hard to put into words. It's also hard to put into words what I felt like getting on that Black Hawk with, you know, 60 pounds of body armor, which I have to have on for a reason, you know. Yeah. Uh, there was there was a moment of shit's getting real <laughs> feeling uh, when that happened. Um, the flying into Baghdad, seeing some of the the destruction that's still there, but also seeing some of the rebuilding going on. Yeah. You know, it's uh, you know, it puts things in a perspective that we can't see unless you actually see it. You know, the media yeah. in America is really jaded. You know, the media has their agenda. Yeah. So to, to be able to get away from that and go out there and see what's really going on, you know. Uh, and I try to spread that message to let people know what's really going on. Because CNN and Fox News, however, you know, right or left you swing, they both have an agenda. I can tell you what I really saw. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, and morale was good over there, you know. Guys, there you go. They miss home like anybody would, but yeah. Well, uh, uh, let's talk about the uh, the immediate future of TNA. Uh, obviously, uh, Broken Matt and Brother Nero are spearheading a, a bit of a ratings resurgence. They're doing their best numbers over the past year, year and a half or so. Uh, uh, the announcement of Cody Rhodes coming in shook things up a little bit. Uh, uh, obviously, you're very uh, close with the X Division, with Trevor Lee and Andrew Everett. Uh, there seems to be some, some young blood there coming up. What do you think we should expect from TNA Impact Wrestling over, say, the next six months or so? I think it's hard to say what to expect because the best thing that TNA is doing right now is that they're unpredictable. Mm -hmm. So I think keep expecting that. You know, I, that's what I want to continue. I don't want you to be able to watch TNA and be able to call the finish of every match yeah. like you can on certain other shows. You know, I want you to watch TNA not knowing what the hell is going to happen. Yeah. You know, that's what's missing in wrestling to me. You know, I mean, I, I watch, I still watch everything, and I can tell you who's going to win 99% of the matches. Yeah. You know, and. Uh, I well, love I, the unpredictability. I think it's gotten to a point where, I mean, you watch some shows and you can even call when the commercial breaks are coming. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just, it's very formulaic and that, that spark of spontaneity mm -hmm. really isn't there a lot. Yeah, so, uh, and two, letting, letting the artists be artists. Yeah. You know, I mean, let the guys be themselves sometimes, you know. Uh, you know, I age in a, a, a lot of different guys up there. And there's some guys I, I kind of groom specifically and some guys I got to let be themselves. Yeah. You know, because you, you got to let birds fly sometimes, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's and TNA's really going out on a limb, you know, not trying to control the talent. Let's see what you got. Let's see what you can do. And crash and burn on your own merit. And some guys are going to burn. Some guys are going to crash. Right. But some are going to fly high. And that's what you're seeing with this whole broken mat and brother Nero. Like, yeah. Now, I've been telling you guys for years that Matt was crazy as hell, and y'all wouldn't listen. <laughs> Nobody listened. You know, the green-haired superhero, I must be the crazy one, right? No. I've been telling you for years his ass was nuts. So this is the real, you know, this is good. These guys, they're having the time of their lives. You know, and I'm not saying that because it's at TNA. That's not a company man. You know, if, if shit's bad, I'll tell you. They're having the time of their lives, and, like, I'm really proud of those guys. This whole resurgence into their 40s, doing some of the best work of their entire career, you know, it's, it's really cool to see. It's really cool to have a company let them do it. Very quickly, what was your gut reaction when you heard the news of Billy Corgan replacing Dixie Carter as TNA president? Um, you know, I haven't been there long enough to have like this super deep relationship with Dixie. I mean, she was my boss and she always treated me with respect. I have nothing but good things to say about her. Uh, and I have nothing but good things to say about Billy. So I don't really have an emotional attachment uh, to either one. You know, I know Billy's very passionate about wrestling, which is a good thing, but Dixie was too. Dixie's and, and her family, regardless of what people say, you know, they kept TNA afloat for a lot of years, and TNA might not even be here if it wasn't for, for Dixie Carter. So it's easy for fans to sit behind a keyboard and bash her, but TNA is still here because of her. So, you know, I mean, for that, you know, I, I got to always give her credit. Yeah. I always give her, you know, uh, props for, for loving loving wrestling and, and wanting it to be a success i think a lot of people overlook the fact that tna at this point has outlived ecw it's outlived wcw uh, no other promotion other than vince mcmahon has had this type of uh, uh 
you know, national and global presence for as long as TNA has at this point. Yeah, this is a difficult business to be yeah. successful in, especially when it comes to longevity. So, yeah. um, you know, I just, my hope, you know, and I'm always a positive guy, so, and, uh, you know, my focus is the in-ring product. That, yeah. That's what my business is. Right. You know, we got other people in the company that need to deal, and that's their job to worry about the business in. My, you know, for me, my part of the job is I worry about the in-ring product. So, and I think if you watched the last year, the in-ring product's been pretty good. Right. Uh, I ain't taking credit for all of it. No. You know, let me, you know, I don't want to. It's like 90, 95 percent, something like uh, that. I'll, I'll just take, just teeny tiny bit. There you go. That's fair. Where can we find you on social media? Where do you want your fans to find? Everything is at Shane Helms Con. Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook. It's all Shane Helms Con. And let's let's mention too that if you're a promoter out there or a booker, uh, you can hire myself and you to do commentary. Yes, sir. We're a good team. We're we're in the business of the voiceover artistry. If anybody oh, yeah. uh, would, would, would like, uh, Shane Helms is officially on the list of clients that uh, you can book courtesy outsource announcing at joe-dombrowski.com. Yes, sir. And, uh, and we can make that happen. Yep. Uh, now, to close this out, uh, I've been a big Shane Helms fan for a number of years, okay. uh, but uh, I'm always partial to the three count years. <laughs> okay. I, I thought, now do you agree with me that that was probably, and take yourself out of it, but as far as, as an act, a character, a group, maybe the most underutilized faction of the past 20 years, my opinion. Uh, I, know it's, I, I know it's a lot. That is a lot. I, I, I'll take your word for it. Okay. I'll tell you what's interesting, though, that you said three count years. Yeah. Because I hear that a lot. We were three count for about nine months. Yeah. But that's how much of an impact that silly gimmick. That's true. And that's how memorable it was. That's true. It was like nine months can, before can, I went off the Sugar Shane on my, on my cruiser, cruiserweight run by myself. And then you had the Vertebraker rap song. Yep. And the dancers and the whole deal. Yeah, sir. Um, can, we, can we get a few bars of three count to close us out? I was the rapper, man. So you were the rapper? I can't do it without my you backup, You can't do the man. harmony? No, no, see, so you, you, can't, you can't sing for free, you know what I mean? Okay. I got to have my music, and I can't sing for shit. That's why I was the rapper of the group. See, I wish I had the power uh, to have the music piping in now. And I got to have Jimmy here. If I sing without Jimmy, I, there could be a loss. Okay, and I can't compare to Jimmy Hart, so we'll go with that. We'll, we'll save the duet for another time. You bet. Save it for the voiceover session. Right. Shane Helms, thank you very much you, for joining us on WrestleZone Weekly. Thank you very much once again to Shane Helms. Of course, my website is joe-dabrowski.com. All of my merchandising and social media links are there, as well as you can click on the Outsource Announcing tab if you'd like to hire myself and Shane the Hurricane Helms to voice over your wrestling event, archival footage, demo, whatever the case is. If you want our voice services, we are available to you. This Saturday night, I will be at PWX Pro Wrestling Express in McKeesport, Pennsylvania. PWXTV.com for information. And on Sunday, I'll be in Cleveland, Ohio at the historic Turner's Hall for Premier Championship Wrestling. All the information you can find at Facebook.com slash Premier Championship Wrestling or at PCW Cleveland on Twitter. That does it for another Road Report. I'll be joined next week. We're going to keep the Impact Wrestling theme rolling because I'm going to be joined by a man who can be summed up in just 10 words. Trouble, 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 trouble. That's right. EC3, Ethan Carter III, will be joining me on the program next week. We'll talk about the uh, shift his character has taken over the past several weeks and uh, touch on a little bit of everything in Impact Wrestling from talent to television and all points in between. So uh, feel free to tune in next week once again for another WrestleZone Weekly Road Report.